Hello, welcome back to Let's Play Jane's Fighters Anthology as we continue with the Jane's Reference Showcase. Today, we will be going over the B3C Orion and its AEW configuration. Although the game, the reference may present a more generalized version of what versus what's in the game, but... Um, yeah, because they only have one entry. Actually, does the game have both? I can't remember. Uh, anyways, B3 Orion, titled Lockheed... 185 Orion, the 280, the Lockheed 285 Orion, Lockheed 685 Orion, Lockheed 785 Orion, U.S. Navy designation P3, CF designation sets Canadian forces, CP-140 Aurora and CP-140A Arcturus, type land-based maritime patrol and ASW aircraft, program Lockheed 1 competition for off-the-shelf ASW aircraft 1958. First Flight Aerodynamic Prototype, 19th of August, 1958. First Flight Fully Equipped YP-3A, YP-3V-1, 25th of November, 1959. P-3C produced from 1969. P-3AB are Model 185. P-3C is Model 285. Total 642 P-3s built in California, Burbank, then Palmdale. Last delivered to Canada, May of 1991. Production line reopened at Marietta, Georgia, August of 1991. First P3C from Marietta for Korea rolled out 28th of June 1994. Following cancellation of P7, USN, Germany, and other considering proposed Orion 2. Design features pressurized cabin, wing section NACA 0014 modified at root, NACA 0012 modified at tip, dihedro 6 degrees, incidence 3 degrees at root, 0 degrees 30 minutes at tip. Landing gear. Hydraulically retractable tricycle type with twin wheels on each unit. All units retract forward, main wheels into inner engine nacelles. Oleo pneumatic shock absorbers. Power plant for 3,661 kilowatt or 4,910 shaft horsepower Allison T56A14 turboprops, each driving a Hamilton standard 54H60 77 four blade constant speed propeller. Fuel in one tank and fuselage and four wing integral tanks with total usable capacity of 34,826 liters or 9,200 US gallons or 7,660 imperial gallons. Four overwing gravity fueling points and central pressure refueling point. Oil capacity, minimum usable, 111 liters or 29.4 US gallons or 24.5 imperial gallons in four tanks. Avionics. The ANASQ114 General Purpose Digital Computer is the heart of the P3C system. Together with the ANAYA8 data processing equipment and computer controlled display systems, it permits rapid analysis and utilization of electronic, magnetic, and sonic data. NAVCOM system comprises two LTN72 inertial navigation systems. ANAPN227 Doppler, ANARN81 Lauren A and Lauren C. And ARN 118 Tacken, 2 VIR 31A VOR slash LOC slash G5 slash MB receivers, and ARN 83 Low Frequency ADF, and ARA 50 UHF Direction Finder, and AJN 15 Flight Director Indicator for Tactical Directions, HSI. Sorry, HSI for long range flight directions, glide slope indicator on top position indicator, two ANARC 161 HF transceivers, two ANARC 143 UHF transceivers, ANARC 101 VHF receiver transmitter, ANAGC 6 teletype and high speed printer, HF and UHF secure communication units. ANACQ5 data link communication set and ANAIC22 interphone set. ANAPX72 IFF transponder and ANAPX76 SIF interrogator. Electronic computer controlled display equipment includes ANASA70 tactical display, ANASA66 pilots display, ANASA70 radar display, and two auxiliary readouts for computer stored data displays. ASW equipment includes two ANARR-72 sonar receivers, replaced in update three by ANARR-78, two ANAQA-7V8 DIFAR, or directional acoustic frequency 
analysis and recording sono buoy indicator sets, replaced in update 3 by ANUYS1 Proteus. Hyperbolic fix unit, acoustic source signal generator, time code generator, and ANAGH 4V sonar tape recorder. ANASQ81 magnetic anomaly detector, ANASA64 submarine anomaly detector, ANASA65 magnetic compensator, ANALQ78 electronic countermeasures set, ANAPS115 radar set with 360 degree coverage, ANASA69 radar scan converter, undernose ANAAS36 IRDS, uh, KA74 forward computer assisted camera, KB? Yeah, KB18A uh, automatic strike assessment camera with horizon to horizon coverage, and the RO308 Becky thermograph recorder. Becky thermograph recorder. I think that's like, um, that's like depths or, um, water temperatures or something. Arbomet Bombay 2.03 meters wide, 0.88 meters deep, and 3.91 meters long. 480 by 34.5 by 154 inches forward to wing, and 10 underwing pylons. Stores can include in the weapons bay and underwing maximum. Mark 46 torpedo 8 and 0, Mark 50 torpedo 6 and 0, Mark 54 death bomb 8 and 10, D57 nuclear depth charge 3 and 0. Mark 82 500 pound bomb. Do they have 500? Yeah, they call it a 560 pound bomb. Interesting. Uh, 8 and 10. Mark 83 980 pound bomb 3 and 8. Mark 38 destructor 8 and, or 8 and 10. Mark 40 destructor 3 and 8. LAU 68 A pod 7 with 7 2.75 inch rockets or LAU 69 AS with 19 2.75 inch rockets or the LAU A slash C which has 4 5 inch rockets or the SUU 44 A with 8 flares 0 and 4. Mark 52 mine 3 and 8. Mark 55 or Mark 56 mine 1 and 6. Uh, Mark 60 torpedo 0 and 6. I think that's might be wrong. We had the it's like uh I, yeah it should be a Mark 50 probably because the ones I remember maybe there's an older airdrop torpedo but I think the Mark 46, the Mark 48, the Mark 50, and the Mark 52. AGM 85 harpoon anti ship missile zero and eight. Two AM 9L sidewinder air to air missiles underwing for self defense. Maximum total weapon load includes six 2,000 pound mines under wings and a 3,290 kilogram or 7,252 internal load made up of two Mark 101 depth bombs, four Mark 44 torpedoes, pyrotechnic pistol, and 12 signals, and 87 sonar buoys, 100 Mark 50 underwater sound signals for P3 A and B, or 60 Mark 3A marine markers P3 A and B, 42 Mark 7 marine markers, two ET buoys uh, and two Mark V parachute flares. Harpoon missiles are standard fit on a proportion of US Navy P3 seats. And I think they did actually get a couple, or well, the one incident I'm thinking of is a P3 did sink a uh, Libyan boat during the Libyan Civil War. It was like a missile boat that was in violation of like the UN order to not set sail or something with regards to the Civil War. And that one, I know the uh, after being warned many times in multiple languages, they hit it with a Maverick, which the P3 can also carry because they were modified for that um, for between the Iraq and um, the Afghanistan wars because they wanted to put as many ISR assets overland as possible. So the P3s kind of got defocused on their ASW mission and they ended up doing more general purpose ISR overland. Dimensions external, wingspan 30.37 meters or 99 feet 8 inches. Wing cord at root 5.77 meters or 18 feet 11 inches. At tip 2.31 meters or 7 feet 7 inches. Wing aspect ratio 7.5. Length overall 35.61 meters or 116 feet 10 inches. Height overall 10.27 meters or 33 feet and 8 and a half inches. 
Area's wings gross 120.77 meters squared or 1,300 square feet. Aileron's total 8.36 meters squared or 90 square feet. Trailing edge flaps total 19.32 meters squared or 2,208 square feet. Uh, fin, including dorsal fin, 10.78 meters squared or 116 square feet. Rudder, including tab, 5.57 meters squared or 60 square feet. Weights and loadings, P3, B, and C. Weight empty, 27,890 kilograms or 61,491 pounds. Max fuel weight, 28,350 kilograms or 62,500 pounds. Ah. Alright, uh, max expendable load, 9,071 kilograms or 20,000 pounds. Max normal takeoff weight, 61,235 kilograms or 135,000 pounds. Max permissible weight, 64,100 kilograms or 142,000 pounds. Performance for P3, B, and C at max takeoff weight, except where indicated otherwise. Max level speed at 4,575 meters or 15,000 feet at AUW of 47,625 kilograms or 105,000 pounds. 411 knots or 761 kilometers per hour or 473 miles per hour. Economy cruising speed at 7,620 meters or 25,000 feet at AUW of 49,895 kilograms or 110,000 pounds, 328 knots or 608 kilometers per hour or 378 miles per hour. Patrol speed at 457 meters or 1,500 feet at AUW of 49,895 kilograms or 110,000 pounds, 206 knots or 381 kilometers per hour or 237 miles per hour. Stalling speed flaps up 133 knots or 248 kilometers per hour or 154 miles per hour. Flaps down 112 knots or 208 kilometers per hour or 129 miles per hour. Rate to climb at 457 meters or 1,500 feet, 594 meters or 1,950 feet per minute. Time to 7,620 meters, 25,000 feet, 30 minutes. Service ceiling 8,625 meters or 28,300 feet. Service ceiling OEI, 5,790 meters or 19,000 feet. Length 35.61 meters, height 10.27 meters, wingspan 30.37 meters. Max wing load, 507 kilograms per meter squared. Max level speed, 411 knots. Service ceiling, 8,625 meters and a takeoff run of 1,290 meters. In the photo album, we can see, oh, this is Australian. Uh, this is also Australian. <laughs> um, this might be Canadian. I can't see the round though. And then we've got an unmarked one. It's probably still at the Lockheed factory or something. But yeah, it looks like despite the uh, the database label being the AEW version, it, it oh you can actually see the AEW version right there. Um, so that was a version made for like U.S. Customs and Border Patrol. And they made a handful of those, and basically they're mostly just used to watch uh, sectors of air and sea, just to make sure like no one's trying to fly a plane load of smuggling drugs or something. Or uh, I think they've also been used to hunt down narco speedboats that are trying to smuggle drugs into the U.S. And here we can see the 3D view, which is the regular P3. So I guess, I don't know, I'm getting mixed messages here. <laughs> but here you can see they have the, uh, this is the surface search radar, the dedicated surface search radar that you can see is mounted underneath the P3. Um, I assume this is, this whole hump here is either like some sort of antenna array or, um, it could just be extra space for electronics or cooling, since there are a lot. And the other big noticeable feature is the, which they don't have modeled very well here, but normally there'd be a probe coming off of the tail or um, a stinger, and that's the magnetic anomaly detector, which it's basically like a big old um, metal finder. <laughs> Um, and they can they use that because if you it's sensitive enough and that's why it's got to be out pretty far away from the aircraft so that way the aircraft doesn't cause false positives 
but it's actually sensitive enough that if you manage to fly right over a submarine and it's at a relatively shallow depth, it will set off that magnetic anomaly detector. And that will conclude today's episode. So with that, thank you all for watching and stay tuned for next time and stay safe out there. And we'll see you then.